Mr. President, can you explain why you did not condemn those hate groups by name over the weekend? They've been condemned. They have been condemned. And, and why are we not having a press conference today? You said on Friday you had a press conference. We had a press conference. We just had a press conference. Can we ask you some more questions? Then, sir? It doesn't bother me at all, but you know, I like real news, not fake news. Give fake news. Thank you, everybody. Hello, I'm Hat. And welcome to Hat's Gorilla News. I wanted to do something personal today. Last night I wrote Mitch McConnell, Paul Ryan, and Ron Johnson. I wanted to get down on paper my thoughts regarding the upcoming legislative push in relation to the Parkland shooting. There are certain self-evident items I did not include, vis-a-vis -vis banning semi-automatic firearms or AR-15s specifically. I feel my opposition to those goes without saying. With that said, let's get to it. House Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, Senate Majority Leader Paul Ryan, Senator Ron Johnson. I'm writing to express my hopes and views on the soon-to-be upcoming votes on gun control and guns in schools, plus other topics I feel must be part of the conversation. 1. Ban bump stocks. I am an NRA Lifetime member but I do not always agree with Wayne and the board. In this case, however, I back them on banning bump stocks. I feel they are legal only by way of a loophole in the ATF rules and are not in any way justifiable. They artificially increase the rate of fire of semi-automatic firearms to virtually the same as an automatic. I see no legal purpose for them. Is this important in the grand scheme of things? No, but I feel we Republicans are going to have to throw a bone to the Dems, and this is a gimme. 2. Do not raise the age to buy a long gun, rifle or shotgun, to 21 years old. There are too many instances of young people defending themselves in their apartments or homes with legally purchased long guns to suddenly make it illegal for citizens that age to have that right taken away. Being able to serve your country, yet not allowed to purchase a long gun for self-protection, is an egregious miscarriage of both the God-given right to self-preservation and of the Second Amendment. By the way, I was initially in favor of raising the age for long gun purchases to 21. The testimony of Dana Lash at that execrable town hall meeting last Wednesday swayed me completely. You can't argue against facts. Three, repeal gun-free school zones arm qualified teachers, and free up funds for more school metal detectors. Any gun-free zone is an invitation to a mass shooter to have at it. Every recent mass shooting, aside from one or two, happened in a gun-free zone. I am a registered CCW holder in Wisconsin and find it terrifying every time I have to disarm myself in an environment where there are no others who are armed and in a position to defend my family and me from someone wishing us harm. Students should not be in that same position, no matter what their age. Armed teachers are possibly the most critical deterrent to school shooters. Having personnel on campus at the vital place and time to interdict a gunman or gunmen is crucial. The failings of the Broward County Sheriff's Office and the deputies at the shooting scene provide a crystal clear example of how depending on law enforcement to solve the problem is massively short-sighted. For what it's worth, Sheriff Israel needs to be indicted on charges possibly obstruction and aiding and abetting. I am not a lawyer, of course. See number five for more on this. Metal detectors have been proven to be a significant deterrent to those who wish to bring a weapon to a school or any other place detectors are installed. I see no reason they shouldn't be a fixture in any school, at least in junior high and high schools. Four, support expanded background checks and mental health holds on gun ownership or purchases. These are self-explanatory. Five, hold those responsible for allowing the Parkland shooter to be able to purchase any weapon, firearm, knife, whatever, to the fullest extent of the law. The FBI and the Broward County Sheriff's Office, BCSO, have blood on their hands, full stop. To allow any of the law enforcement officers who ignored the obvious tips, signs of this maniac's potential for mass violence would be the second greatest tragedy of this event. These agents, deputies, did not only drop the ball, they stand testament to how all of the lessons learned since Columbine, even since Whitman and the University of Texas massacre, have been ignored. 
We have been told for years now to pay attention to warning signs, how school shooters don't just spring up out of nowhere. The BCSO had the Florida murderer on their radar for virtually a full decade, and the FBI had plenty of time to act on the two separate and easily followed up tips they received from concerned citizens. These LEOs cannot be allowed to skate by with internal disciplinary action by their respective departments. If, by some act of God, they are not in violation of any criminal statutes, then such laws must be put in place immediately. For example, Deputy Peterson, by all accounts to date, stood by while, I won't use his name, rampaged through the school Peterson was designated to protect. What happened? He retired and so far can draw his pension. Is that how we reward this kind of inaction? Sheriff Israel is directly responsible for the actions of his deputies. We must make an example of him to show other political hacks how this kind of dereliction will not be tolerated. Finally, strengthen the mental health laws to allow those unable to manage their illnesses to be permanently hospitalized. For too long now, America has bowed to pressure from well-meaning but misguided mental health experts who pushed for outpatient treatment of the severely mentally ill. The introduction of more effective drugs seemed to usher in a new era of therapy in which mental illness sufferers could pick up their medication from local clinics, thereby allowing them the freedom to live outside of confinement. What has happened instead is the proliferation of mentally ill people who instead choose not to take their meds and become even more unmanageable. The Parkland, Florida and Virginia Tech shooters are prime examples of how this kindler and gentler policy has not helped but hurt both those suffering individuals and society at large. I realize this will require building more long-term inpatient facilities, but balance that out with the human costs we've been paying, not only regarding the many assaults committed by these individuals, but also the number of homeless on our streets who are there because they aren't getting proper treatment. The cost-benefit will surely be on our side in the long run. Thank you for your time. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. There you have it. As I stated in the beginning, this is not necessarily a comprehensive list, but I think it hits the high points pretty well. Now I want to hear from you. What are your views on this letter? Would you like to add anything? Would you like to subtract something? Do you feel banning bump stocks is a horrible idea, that it opens the way to even more gun control by the left over time? I feel it is important we discuss these things, so please put your comments in the section below. Please tell others about this channel, as well as my original channel, AHNC All Hat No Cattle. Also, feel free to donate to my maker support page. The link is in the description. Until next time, be well, and as always, thank you for your attention. Oh, that was a good one!